sun is rising. It's uh, a redo of yesterday. I drove all the way to Halliburton to do a test run of an upcoming weekend with some of the guys. And as I was staging, I realized I didn't have my boots. So, uh, needless to say, I couldn't ride. And now I've, well, I took the day and just spent it with the family and I'm gonna try and do this again. It's 6.50 in the morning. I'm heading up to Halliburton area to try and get in as many kilometers as I can. What's coming up is we have a two day trip planned where we're in a sense trying to replicate the court, but that has its challenges because we can't just do whatever we want. There's trespassing issues, private property. Um, so we have to avoid those areas. And if we can map around them, then I think we can still have a pretty full weekend. So day one is going to be approximately 100 kilometers. Day two is about 120. And my intention was to go up to do day one yesterday to map it out, lay some GPS tracks, because I'm not too sure if it works. There's some areas where I'm just a little uncertain, and I thought going up, scouting it, and making sure that it's okay for the larger group of 10 odd guys um, would be a valuable thing. So now I've got my boots, I've got coffee. I feel a lot better today than I did yesterday. Just wasn't in the right mind uh, set. But today I'm feeling good and I'm looking forward to this solo adventure. Somerville Forest, Victoria County, I guess the official name is. I'm gonna be doing a solo scouting mission today. And um, I'm all set up. You can see I've got two GPS here. One is showing the actual track on the right that we're going to be doing for this trip. And the one on the left is uh, all the trails in the area. So that way if I get lost, I can reroute if I need to. Just started the bike, so as you can hear, it needs to be warmed up. But it's uh, just a little bit before 8 a.m. And I'm gonna see how many kilometers I can get uh, covered today. So let's see, I'm gonna reset where I go on. I'm gonna reset here. Okay, good, we're set, ready to go. I love this forest. different type of riding when you're riding for distance by yourself and racing it's a got a lot of gear on me bikes a lot heavier so I'm trying to keep a decent pace but I also don't want to do anything that's gonna risk a big crash or unnecessarily breaking down the bike Find that strike that balance between speed and my safe riding ability. It's gonna be a great day. Woo! Spot I call Ewok Village that we will stop at. Up here, you got some really neat pine trees, and that connects up there if you want to go that way to the uh, Tunnel of Love. Here, there's a bit of a section. I'm gonna be heading south here, so. Go this way. Usually we stop there for a bit, but today it's about getting some distance in, so let's try it. Action here. Key is don't hit the brakes on this. Look at how cool this is here. I thought I'd stop actually. I went back because it's so peaceful, I wanted to see it. Very cool. We need the morning. 
morning with no one around. These trails are in really good shape. When we came up at the beginning of the season, we helped clean up and get these started. And now, now that people have been tracking them out, they just look fantastic now. Really nice single trail up here in the Somerville Forest. This is what it was like before all the logging happened and now it looks like it's back. It's great to see this is such a nice forest. And it was a shame when it all got logged and kind of decimated really. Now with all this stuff back, one of my favorite forests is back. It's coming with me though, I got a log with me it's coming along. Yeah, this is great. So I was going through this forest this morning, I just thinking to myself, how cool is it? How fortunate are we to live in Canada and in this province to be able to do this sort of activity and uh, take advantage of it. You know, you get a dirt bike and you come up here, there's basically limitless trails that you can just mess around on. I'm gonna not even scratching the surface here what I've done so far of this section and there's no one here Whoop. It snuck up on me a little bit but you know it's also important though that we keep these forests well preserved and con uh, you know the importance of conservation sometimes you come across garbage or people who will just wreck the trails and we just have to try and be conscious that this is a real privilege to be able to do this stuff and you know support your local clubs or whoever it may be to that help build these trails Whew. that was cool I just realized it's really cool here is that at this section uh, with this bridge that we just came across there's actually a couple ways to do it now so you, know, you see on the last one I actually did uh, try to spin around here on the last one when I came first I went right as we normally do but um, there's actually a whole other area that you can do now I didn't even realize it but straight up this way it's like a new area altogether. It kind of cuts it. New section. So I'm backtracking now and heading back to the area that I just went exploring on. Try and not see what was going on there. So I'm gonna head down here now, which heads, leads up to the uh, the rail trail. stream this is right um, by under the uh, tunnel of love on the corduroy so this river will flow into tunnel of love and uh, we can cross here this is the section that the non-experts will come across non-expert pros in the corduroy so I'm gonna cross over head into the other side of the forest you can see here on the GPS where we're at yeah and so I'm gonna keep going there do some more exploring what a cool section this is. Very cool. Awesome. myself really neat section here coming right across this corduroy what a 
nice forest. Tunnel of Love, which is, uh, as I said earlier, that's the big corduroy section that uh, makes or breaks a lot of people's races. It gets pretty chaotic if you watch some of the YouTube footage. Um, not doing that today, but you can get a sense of what the riders have to get through and up. Yeah, so no uh, Tunnel of Love today. I'm just going to cross and head back. I'm just kind of scouting this area, and then I'll continue along. Little water crossing here. Awesome. It's great how, look at this, they all carved it out nicely too. They can head back up. This is great. Clean out that water. new section now this is uh as you head down the rail trail you come into this section that's uh i guess it was like an expert section for the uh the court oh wow and uh so uh it's a little bit unclear where you well i shouldn't say that it's pretty obvious but we always seem to not find the proper end of this trail and uh, I'm gonna try and find it today so that I can properly loop, loop, loop this to uh, the rest of the ride. Oh, that wasn't good. Ow. My bike said ow there. In this part because it's one of my buddy's uh, favorite areas up here. And it actually looks a lot better than we were here last time. Just a tip on that, you see that corner there? For those of you having a hard time with, you know, big sections, big rooty sections around corners, try and come up really high on it. And then uh, swing your, your sort of bike around it with a bit of speed and uh, plant your left leg they kind of use that almost like a kick out kick out pivot turn in a sense and i find that's really helped me get around big rooty areas so you come around kick down and kind of swing your whole bike up and over that was fun mark 20 is this staircase here 28 interesting terrain here because it goes from really big granite with ledges to like a sand track. <laughs> it's so bizarre but pretty cool. I came around, I thought that was a bear because I just saw this big dark thing. It was a 
Holy turned up tree, that kind of scared me. So as you can see now, I'm by myself today. And uh, I thought it maybe it'd be helpful to, for those of you guys watching what I sort of brought. And, um, basically, you gotta make sure that you you know, act as self-sufficient. So, if you're going to an area without uh, cell phone reception, then you want to think about maybe an in-reach uh, SOS, something like that, a spot, so that you can call someone in if necessary. Fortunately, the areas I'm in today all have cell phone coverage. I should have one, but, you know, they're expensive, so maybe I'll get one soon. And then, of course, you want to make sure you got all the tools you need. If you're running tubes like I am, run ultra heavy duties and also make sure that you've got the ability and tools to change your tire. I only have one tube with me today, spare tube, but I thought about bringing two in my giant loop pack there in front, but instead I brought my lunch. So, figured, well, at least I got the calories to walk out if necessary. So this is the part that we always get lost, but now it looks like an actual trail, so that's good. See, it kind of ends here, and we don't really know where to go, but um, I think this looks cool, right? Look at this. Nice. There we go. I've never been here before. This is a great section. Wow. I've never ridden this before, and it kind of looks like it's freshly cut. I don't know, but uh, it's amazing. I just kept following a single, and, uh, and I ended up here. Oh, shoot, mistake. Uh, it's okay. Back to what I was saying, this whole area is on the, uh, you come out on a pinery road and uh, ended up over here. It looks like it was still marked up until this point and I don't see any, no trespassing signs, so, you know, yeah, this is great. in here it doesn't look bad but you never know with these things and because I don't have anyone with me I'm gonna go around because sometimes those things just drop off into nothing and I don't want to have to get my bike on, out of a mud hole without having anyone here here's another mud hole like this 33 oh man I hope I don't get stuck being super cautious right now. Normally I just kind of ride through it and hope for the best, but 
being alone, I really can't afford to get stuck in this stuff. So I'm trying to take the most conservative line, which includes walking part of it. Oh, let's see. See, that's the sort of stuff that you're just hammering through. You got a bunch of buddies. Maybe it's not a big deal, but by yourself, you bury your bike. And uh, the day changes. Look at how cool this is. What a great adventure. You know, it's really, any type of motorcycling is amazing, but when you go it on your own, it's different. You know, you're really thinking more about the ride. You're looking around more. Your focus is on things that kind of get lost in everything else when you're with buddies. So I really like doing this every once in a while, whether it's on a street bike, or in this case, a dirt bike going on an adventure and knowing that you're on your own and you have to think things through. Yeah, it's very rewarding. What a neat spot. I'm surprised I haven't seen any wildlife yet, really. I saw a pheasant. That's it. All right. Let me get back on the road. Okay. Give you another tip when going through this stuff. If you have to get through this mud, basically roll your bike through. I hate to see it when people start revving their bike and it looks like a whole very unpleasant bowel movement. Look at how slow my bike is going through. Not only do you make it through without incident relatively clean but you also create these don't create these huge ruts in the trails see right now the temptation is to fire it but even if you're stuck if you're gonna rev it you're gonna make get more stuck it's not gonna get you out so nice and slow heading through those mud sections Woo! That is awesome. Oh, look at this. So cool. the back break there. Whoops. It's like it's like stop to smell the flowers but you know stop to jump jump the boulders. Another little tip is when you're going over those ledges, if you can pop it, you can land your bike flat. And uh, what that means is just you're coming up to the ledge, press down on both of your foot pegs evenly, right? Compress the suspension evenly. And then as your suspension's coming up, you're gonna be giving it a bit of throttle. Maybe I can find another one here to do it on. Yeah, here, watch. So, pop it. All right, so this, again, this is a, another really good example of where people, I've noticed over and over again, they just kind of go this way, and then when they feel they're starting to get stuck, they just start 
you know, hammering on the throttle. And really what you're trying to do in sections like this is roll your bike. I could probably even roll it right through the middle there, but I'm gonna go where the sticks are because presumably there's a little bit more, less give there. So let's see what happens. You'll notice how slowly I am going through the throttle here. You don't need much throttle to get through that stuff. But if you're gonna pin it, then you're gonna wind up stuck in there for the next 20 minutes because you dug yourself in plus you've screwed it up for the rest of your buddies who are behind you so take it easy man so i'm heading uh heading southward on uh this login road here i'm heading up to a new section and then i'll make my way back up north to where i staged this is down to uh, i think it's called ken somerville in the court I'm not sure if it's still available or what, but I'm gonna go check it out and make sure that it's okay to still do. And, uh, but up till this point, it's been pretty much clear single track, which is great. And um, fast too. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going slower on these roads than I am in the single because you have to be really careful. You know, there's a lot of, especially on the weekends like this, there's a lot of side-by-sides days there's logging trucks you never know what's coming around the corner and you're far more likely to really hurt yourself on these things than you are in the woods i found i've had three three friends seriously hurt themselves hospitalized this year alone on the double track so you guys got to be really careful slow it down going or as tempting as it is you know one side by side coming around the corner or logging truck and that's it Single. Oh yeah, I remember this. Right, this is uh, where we were all lined up for when we did the cord. I remember this. Yeah, there's a huge lineup. I remember this section. There's a huge lineup here when we came last year on the cord all the way down to the start point. I remember my friends and I sitting here and relaxing because uh, yeah, it was, this is the entry point to uh, Ken Somerville. Awesome, mark that. Let's do it. The only thing is now, as you can see, it went from a single to a double. It looks like they uh, made this all into ATV trail, so not much we can do about that. They're well groomed though. They're nice. Just gotta be careful because they're quite slippery with the hard pack mud. Kind of a cool section here. Lots of rocks. And even though it's an ATV trail, it does get um, progressively harder as it goes on from the main trail. But it's certainly uh, it certainly does look a lot different than last year. That's neat. Yeah, it's getting into a pretty advanced ATV trail anyway. A little rest break if you need it. <laughs> Mark that chair. Funny. How's this holding up? No, not bad. I find with this giant loop. It's a good bag. And it uh, holds on to a fender reasonably well, but I was having a lot of problems with it before. But I was putting heavier stuff in it. So if you just got things like lunch. Lunch is perfect. You know, you put some sandwiches in there, it keeps them out of the way, it doesn't get squished, it keeps them waterproof. So for that, it's perfect. It actually is ideal. But I would avoid putting anything like tubes or tools in there. I mean, I think that's what it's made for, but uh, I found that with the tube, it just wasn't working for me. 
but maybe I wasn't securing it properly. Anyway, it works good for the GoPro on now because we're still in uh, Ken Somerville and uh, it's actually getting challenging. There's a lot of pretty technical terrain here that you got to watch for and like this. And, um, and the nice thing is we know, I know now that it's a legit trail we don't have to worry about trespassing or anything like that for our upcoming ride. Pretty nice one too. It was a little bit boring at the beginning, but it's definitely turning into something that makes it worthwhile. And uh, this will actually transit back to where I staged, I think. And uh, if so, we'll gas up and do another section. Check out m &R, which is to the north. Of, uh, which was day one of the cord last year. Uh, this way. See what I mean? You go slow and you got time to think about it. Again, you don't always have that luxury in a race, but you're just riding, you know, in the muddy sections. Take your time. Whee! We don't have time for a wheelie or two. Some sort of hill climb there. See if we can get across it without incident. Yeah, I knew that would be a problem. There we go. Here's another technique. So you can see here there's a lot of mud. And there's really no, maybe there's a workaround, but I'm going to show you for the sake of showing you. Don't, again, don't pin it. Keep your momentum before you get to it and just kind of coast through it with a little bit of throttle. And uh, I'm going to just try and well, I'll make it right through there to the driest line and see what happens. See? Get your momentum first. And I'm on my pegs the whole time. That's another thing that I find really helps. Is just stay on your peg because it gives you the ability to change past quickly and be maneuverable on your bike like this section here see can't really be doing that if you're sitting all the time then we really got to find a workaround here the nice thing about dirt bikes you can make your own trail My bike stuck when I'm by myself, so do it when I have to. Back here again, so we've done a full, well I did a, we, me, I did a full loop and uh, on to the south in the Somerville, Ken Somerville Forest. And uh, I've never done that, well I did in the cord, but not as a ride. And now what I'm doing is I'm coming back to the staging area at Somerville and uh, Pinery and Monk and um, refuel, new GoPro battery, have a sandwich. And yeah, keep riding north up to m &R. How cool is this, eh? Time. Ah, oh, shit. All right. So, did 55K this morning, 55.8 is the southern loop. And now I'm gonna head up to uh, the northern loop that we've tentatively planned. 
uh, head along the rail trail and make our way up to uh, Miserable Lake. See what we can do up there. Should be a lot of fun. Backtracking a little bit through here, but that's fine because it's a great section and also it allows us to refuel and uh, have some lunch. So yeah. Whoop de doo de doo de doo. Ooh. The m &R Crossing. Oh boy. I hope it's not too deep. Oh my god. Not like a place to water out. Alright, well. Uh, okay. Shit. Okay, as long as I don't drop it over, it'll be good. So the key to these crossings is just try and keep your bike going straight and don't drop it. bike stalling out there. Holy smoke. Phew! M and R, this is where it supposedly it, it finished. So I don't know. We'll find out. This looks good though. Oh boy. happening there so uh am I still going the right way boy this is overgrown here yeah I think so oh no must have got off track there since it goes down there somewhere though oh it must be up there huh do I jump off this or do I just 
Uh, I'm alone. I don't want to get hurt. Go around. There. Safety first. Let's go down here then. Yeah. Not like, not like that made it any safer, but okay. At least I'm on trail. Oh, not a good time to miss the gear. this but I figure anyone who's watching this right appreciates this trail so, get some footage of it hey wasn't I just here Way to go. Go up high. I got tired. Oh shoot. Okay, now I gotta think of this. I'm thinking. Uh, boy. Oh, I remember this. I got stuck here. Okay, straight ahead. Good line, just doesn't fit a bike. Oh, it's a front wheel. Super easy after. When in doubt, hit the spell check and send it. Oh boy, I'm getting tired. I remember this one was hard now from the cord. Super fun though. This way. What's the GPS saying? Hang on. Yeah, I think so. Sort of. Actually, it kind of said that way. Anyway, turn around. Yeah. 
Oh, maybe it goes this way too. Yeah, okay. Back on track. This ain't your grandma's singer trail. turn on this highway here. I gotta turn around. No. out of here, is there? That's one of those, you better do it, especially if you're alone. But I like that feeling though, where you have to, there's very few moments in life anymore in this day and age where you really are just relying on your but out here, you sure are. Yeah. Whew. Awesome. Man, that's a good trail. All right. Back at it. I hope that. It doesn't get much harder because uh, I'm really pushing things. What an awesome trail! All right, where to go? Down there, down there. try and get it to go in a bit faster but the challenge is that no one's been riding this and I'm not sure where it goes or what sort of uh, obstacles might be down I have to be a little bit cautious but what a great flow to this trail uh, now what right I should go right Oh, thank God for this GPS. Whoa, that could have been bad. Always where you least expect it. Oh, 
close. Okay. Bike just sunk in there. Oh man, look at this mess. This is bad. I don't know how to get around this. This looks... I think I have to get off my bike and scout something. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Maybe something there. Oh yeah, look at this. Okay, I'm gonna mark this. Mark. Crazy water crossing. 64. But, cool get around. Yep, <laughs> nice. on this trail. It's cool though, I mean, if you can get around them. Take, you know, take your time and take them through and it's great. Oh, please tell me that this is not a crossing. Oh my God. I think I see a way around, we'll see. Nice and slow. Up there. Oh man, this is the compromise. Oh crap. Oh, okay. Um, all right, well. Yes! Oh good, thank goodness. That's hard. Holy jeez. Wow, that was cool. I just gotta get up there. back on it's a pretty cool sections here this trail just keeps getting better amazing Which way? Right. 
getting to that point where I have to concentrate to breathe. Which is a great tip when you're racing. A rider much better than me said that to me once and recently actually and I've been using it ever since a lot. It's just, you know, remember to breathe. It really, really helps because so much of this is just energy conservation. So, if you can keep your energy levels up, you're gonna be able to do all the good stuff. people come down here on ATVs. Holy smokes. This must be a more advanced trail. Oh yeah. far from where I started. Trying to loop back though and then maybe back up. Oh this is cool. Mark that. where a dirt bike can take you. This has got to be something different here. This is crazy. Time I think the water crossings are done or the worst of them, I come across something more challenging. I think I got a line scope, but I, I guess only going across will tell. Let's see. I think you could do this in the spring. Yeah, mission accomplished. So, I'm on basically the uh, final loop back to uh, the staging area, final trail. And uh, what an awesome day it was. I'm really glad that I came up here and was able to scout this out for 
our upcoming trip because you never know what problems you're going to run into and there's a few uh, things that I, uh, I'm glad I know now. You know, there's some trails that I don't think are worth doing and then others are very much worth doing. And then just small things like, you know, where things are, marking them on the GPS. I thought too, some of you might be wondering what, uh, what kind of bike am I running? I mean, it's not, a lot of you probably already know, but in case you were curious, it's a 2018 KTM 250 XCW. And uh, no special tricks to it. It still has this, I haven't even touched the jetting since I bought it. Um, what else? Michelin Star Cross five soft tires. Today I was running them at uh, 12 in the rear and 14 in the front. The reason I was doing that is because uh, I couldn't afford to have a puncture. So I was running those with ultra du heavy duty tubes, Michelin ultra heavy duty tubes. And those seem to do very well for me. A lot of people are always trying to get me to convert to tubeless or moose. And uh, I like the tubes, you know, the tubeless. I don't know, this doesn't do it for me and I've, all the people that I ride with seems like they're having more problems than not. Always leaking, things like that and people will say, oh, it's because you didn't install it properly or whatever. Yeah, well, whatever. I just want to put in a tube and I know it will work. So I want that and I want the versatility of inflating and deflating to the pressure I want given the day. So, you know, like for example, if I was with my friends right now, I'd probably reduce my tires down to 8 and 10 for a bit more traction, but then I know I've got a team there in case I blow a tire. But today the extra traction wasn't worth the possibility or the increased risk of a, of a puncture flat. So I went with a higher, higher PSI. And what else? Um, you can see I had that giant loop bag on. I'm running... Um, my climb toolkit that I have for another video and a quench pack. The quench pack is two liters, but I actually throw another 1.5 liter uh, bladder in there. So that way I've got 1.5 liters of Gatorade. And then I just have the other two liters filled with water. And I usually put like a Electrolyx tablet or two in there. Um, what else? Two GPS today. Um, I usually just run one, but my buddy lent me one to help prepare for the trip, and I like it. It's good because you can keep one zoomed in, one zoomed out. You can keep one with all the trails on it in case you come across something you're not too sure about, and then the other one on just the track that you're you're doing. It's a nice little, nice comfort to have. And. Yeah, and that's about it. I mean, there's nothing particularly special about this bike. Just pretty much a stock 250 XCW 2018. And that was a great day of riding. Thanks for watching, guys. Rusty Sprockets, and uh, be sure to tune in again when we actually upload the, the full trip with the guys. And it's going to be a great adventure.